Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Evergreen Lutheran Church. Welcome to virtual worship at Evergreen Lutheran for the 24th Sunday after Pentecost. We're grateful that you have joined us this morning and hope that you will continue to do so. Um, next Sunday morning, we are offering in-person Sunday morning worship at 9.30, uh, but also still Thursday evening worship at 6 o'clock and most importantly, still virtual worship uh, that should be in your email boxes by about 8 o'clock on Sunday morning. Um, this morning at 10 o'clock, there is um, an adult ed class that Tom McEwen is leading. And then throughout the week, there are various opportunities for you to participate in educational events. This coming Tuesday, we're starting a new study on a Barbara Brown Taylor book at one o'clock. I hope uh, that you're able to join us. Also, if you're interested, uh, Rebecca is leading uh, an Advent wreath making party at uh, Safe Distance Party outside by the church house at six o'clock on Wednesday. If you wanna come, you need to sign up so we are certain to have enough materials for everyone to make Advent wreaths. So um, Advent isn't far away and uh, it would be great for you to join us. So hope you do. Um, I think that's all the announcements. Oh, actually, next Sunday and uh, Thursday also, uh, we will celebrate Thanksgiving. Uh, we won't have an evening uh, Thanksgiving service like we've had before, so we will make sure and do a Thanksgiving service uh, next Thursday the 19th or next Sunday the 22nd. So hope you join us. Let's take a minute to quiet our hearts, and then we will begin this morning's worship. Oh, dear. 
You'll find the pastoral greeting on page one of your bulletin. We begin our worship and celebration of God's love for us and all in need. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Righteous God, our merciful Master, you own the earth and all her peoples, and you give us all that we have. Inspire, Inspire us to serve you with justice, justice and, and wisdom, wisdom and, and prepare, prepare us for the joy of the day of your coming. coming. Through, Through Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, our Savior and Lord. Lord. Amen. The New Testament lesson is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. Word of God, strength for the journey. Thanks be to God. Hi friends, how are you? We miss you here at the church. Please know that we love you and that we are praying for you. We hope you're doing well. For today's message, I would love to start with a question. Have you ever been to a talent show before? A talent show is one of those cool performances where different people get up one after the other and they share something that they're really good at. Maybe they have a hidden talent of like licking their elbow or maybe they're really good at soccer or maybe they're good at singing. These are all talents that they share and the audience enjoys and claps and celebrates with them. Can you think in your mind right now of somebody that you know who's very, very talented? Maybe it's a famous person, maybe it's someone in your family, maybe it's your friend. Maybe it's somebody like Tom Brady or Aaron Rodgers who are really good at football. Or maybe it's like Taylor Swift or Elvis Presley who are really good at music. Maybe it's someone like Pablo Picasso who's really good at art and painting. Or maybe it's someone like Albert Einstein who's really, really smart. The cool thing is that God made those people very talented. God gave them the gifts that they have, their talents that they share with other people. And the even cooler thing is that God gave you your own talents. What is something that you're good at? My friends, I am so thankful. I thank God every day for the gift of music. I think God gave me a talent for music. I love to play the flute. I love to play guitar. I love to share music with other people. I'd love for you now to turn to somebody who's near you and tell them something that you're good at. What's a talent that God gave you? And ask uh, the person who you're talking to, what's, a, what's one of their talents? What's a talent that God gave them? God gave us talents so that we can enjoy them and celebrate them, but also so that we can use them to help other people. One way that I use music to help other people is if they're feeling sad or lonely, then I'll play a song for them or maybe play a song with them. What's one way that you can use your talent to help somebody else today? Go ahead and share that with whoever you're with.
That's awesome. Let's pray together. Dear God, thank you for loving me. Thank you for gifting me with my unique talents. Please help me to share my talent with others. We love you. Amen. Take care, my friends. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The, the one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of, the two, of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with two talents also came forward saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers and on my return, I would have received what was mine with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the 10 talents. For to all that, ha that who have, more will be given and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Prince of Peace. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, because there is no er effort without error and shortcoming. But who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. Theodore Roosevelt. Roosevelt's words in 1910 still ring true today for us as Christians. Our gospel reminds us that our call as Christians is to dare greatly. We are called into the arena of life, to live into the gifts God gave us, to love without ceasing, to share God's word, but also to make mistakes, to trust grace, lean into our faith that God is with us, and to risk for furthering God's kingdom. In our parable today, the master gives his slaves talents. 
what exactly is a talent, you might ask? Well, in Jesus' time, just one talent was an extremely large amount of money. It was about the amount that a laborer would get for 15 years of hard work. If that's not impressive enough, Thomas Stiegman notes that the master in the parable allows his servants the freedom to take initiative. The large amount of money, as well as the autonomy to care for it, shows the amount of trust, generosity, and love in the relationship. The talents are valued, but the servants even more. Just as the master gave talents to his servants, God entrusted talents to us. God didn't give us large sums of money by sending money bags down from heaven, but instead God gave us something more important and useful. We were given different abilities, strengths, perspectives, talents. See what I did there? These talents that God gifted us with are incredibly important pieces of the bigger picture in which God encourages us to participate. God entrusts us with these talents to further God's kingdom here on earth. Lindsay Armstrong writes, teaching the commandments and sharing the gospel so that all may truly live is a clear priority of Jesus and may very well be a life-changing treasure worth stewarding before all else. This life-changing treasure brings about so much grace, joy, love, and new life. Scott Hosey writes, we are saved by God's grace alone, but then are also given the opportunity to jump into that already flowing river of grace. Our actions in the river would not be possible were it not for God, but what a joy and privilege it is to be in that river at all. What if we started looking at our God-given talents and strengths as being as valuable as at least 15 years of hard work? God created us each as unique children with unique abilities. We are called to honor and celebrate the valuable gifts that our Creator gave us. We can do this by reflecting within ourselves, asking our trusted loved ones, and asking God to show us how we're using our gifts in the world. Finally, we can lean into the most valuable gift of faith, knowing that God is with us. How different would the world look if we celebrated these gifts and lived into them? using them to share the flowing river of grace with others. Even when we are equipped with valuable gifts from God, why is this so hard? Why is honoring our talents and using them freely to further God's kingdom in the world so difficult? I think it's because it involves risk. Getting into the arena, like Roosevelt talks about, is scary. Whenever we put ourselves out there, we open ourselves up for pain, loss, heartbreak, or failure. Just think about any relationship you're in. There's always a chance for our hearts to be broken. When we love someone, we might suffer real loss or pain. When we wrestle with our faith and question it, we run the risk of not finding an answer we like, of making a mistake, looking foolish, or not finding an answer at all. When we give, there's fear and risk that there might not be enough. When we advocate for others, we might be criticized or alienated. And when we invest in a community, we must be vulnerable and run the risk of getting hurt. Maybe it's so difficult to get into the arena because we are afraid that we are not good enough. A scene from C.S. Lewis's Chronicles of Narnia provides an illustration. Scott Hosey writes, near the end of C.S. Lewis's Chronicles of Narnia, Aslan the lion takes Lucy, Edmund, and Peter, and everyone to the new Narnia to what we would call heaven, or the new creation. It's a place of astonishing light and beauty, a place where every blade of grass seems to mean more and where every creature sings for the sheer joy of the creator. It's a place where everything is just so real, in depth and color, and the mere sight of a daisy can take your breath away and makes you weep for the sheer beauty of the thing. But then, in the midst of all the splendor, the children see a group of dwarves huddled together. Convinced that they're sitting in the rank stench of a barn, a place so dark that they can't even see their hands in front of their faces, Lucy is upset because the dwarves are not enjoying the new Narnia that she begs Aslan to help them to see. Aslan the lion replies, Dearest Lucy, I will show you what I can do and what I cannot do. 
Aslan then shakes his golden mane, and a sumptuous banquet instantly appears in front of the dwarves. Each dwarf is given a plate heaped with juicy meats and glistening vegetables, plump grains of rice. Each also receives a goblet brimming with the finest wine anyone could imagine. But when the dwarves dive in and begin eating, they start gagging and complaining. Doesn't this beat all, they lament. Not only are we in the stinking stable, but now we've got to eat hay and dried cow dung as well. When they sip the wine, they sputter, look at this now, dirty water out of a donkey's trough? The dwarves, Aslan goes on to say, had chosen suspicion instead of trust and love. They were prisoners of their own mind. They could not see Aslan's gift of the new Narnia, for they would not see it. Aslan can but leave them alone to the hell of their own devising. Our insecurity and anxiety prevents us from seeing the never-ending feast. Similar to the third servant in our parable, our fear drives us to bury our talents, to sit outside of the arena, to stay on the shore of the never-ending river of grace. This is a dangerous place, my friends. John Buchanan writes, Jesus' warning is that the outcome of playing it safe, of not caring, of not loving passionately, not investing yourself, not risking anything, is something akin to death, like being banished to the outer of darkness. The good news is that the other two servants provide wonderful examples for us that it's worth the risk. They show us that when we enter into the arena, we choose joy and grace and choose to be part of the feast. The goodness of God's grace abounds. There is always enough. And my friends, God's grace is for you. Grace means that we do not have to live in fear and bury our talents. We do not have to take the safe route and be a critic on the sideline. Instead, when we know God is with us, we can dive full force into the arena of life. Grace will not prevent us from feeling pain or heartbreak, but it is with us through it. Grace means that there will be comfort in your pain, growth from your mistakes, healing in your heartbreak, and light in your darkness. Grace means forgiveness, mercy, and everlasting love. Grace means God will always be with us. Our psalm for this week reminds us that. Psalm 90, Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the whole world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. God calls us to risk, to love, to laugh, to invest, to advocate, serve. By leaning into our understanding of grace, we get to participate in the joy of God's kingdom. Living into grace, we are free to live into the valuable talents that God gave us and use them in the arena of life. We can use them as we jump into the river of grace and bring others with us. In this way, we will get to participate in God's heavenly feast. May we ask God to guide us in our discerning of the gifts that we are given. May we show our gratitude for our talents by using them to shine God's light out to others. In the process, may we encourage others to do the same. May we have the courage to enter the arena. May we trust God's grace over our fear. May we feel God's presence with us from everlasting to everlasting. I'd like to end with a poem by Marian Williamson. It's called Our Deepest Fear. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we're liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Amen. Amen.
our hymn of the day. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Sovereign of all, train our ears to hear the cries of the needs of those around us. Bless all outreach ministries of the church through which we serve others as we ourselves have been served. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You cause rain to fall on the just and unjust alike. Direct our use of creation to provide for the needs of all people in ways that are sustainable for the earth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Bring peace to every place where conflict rages. Grant opportunities for ending divisions among us and usher in your reign of unity and reconciliation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Heal the sinful divisions we erect and release us from systems of oppression and prejudice. Increase our capacity to see your image in all people. We call to mind those who are struggling today and we pray for them as well as those listed on our prayer list. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Pour out the gifts of your spirit on children and youth in our congregation. Sustain those who work in children's, 
youth, and confirmation ministries. Use them to nurture the faith of our youth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Thank you for saints now departed who fed the hungry, clothed the naked, and tended to the sick. Inspire us by their example that we may imitate their service of love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. As always, we are incredibly grateful for your offerings, and we covet them uh, to continue the good work that you and our Lord and Savior has called us to do in this place. So uh, there are several ways for you to offer your gifts, and uh, those are evident here in the bulletin. If you have any questions or concerns about uh, the offering, please make sure you call the church office. The offering prayer, let us pray. Creator God, the Alpha and the Omega, we give you thanks for the generosity of generations whose offerings built this special church. Receive now the offerings we give in response to your gracious love. Teach us to sacrifice without reserve and with our gifts bless the ministry of this holy place. May, May your, your kingdom, kingdom come and your will be done among us today and for all generations. Amen. Before we begin the great Thanksgiving, I invite you to have bread and wine available that you might bless uh, the elements as I speak the words of institution here in the sanctuary. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. I invite you to take the bread. In the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now the cup. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of your sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us this beautiful morning in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, Father who Lord art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the children of God. May you be nourished that you might take risks. God be with you as you receive this meal.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen each one of us and keep us in God's grace. Amen. Our post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Shepherd of Israel, you have gathered us and fed us richly with the bread of life and the cup of blessing. Turn our hearts to all who hunger and thirst for food and for justice. Strengthen us through this sacred meal to follow the example of the love of the saints who have gone before us. Send us now into the world renewed for service. We pray this in your name, O Jesus, our Savior and friend. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you deep, deep peace this day and safety all week. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, my brothers and sisters. Be merciful. Remember, feed, and love the poor. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Have a great week, everybody. I look forward to seeing you next week. Uh, do be safe and stay strong.